Hello, Phil. Um, it's so lovely to see you this afternoon. Um, oh. Welcome. You are you are delivering the masterclass at the um, 2023 conference, and we are so excited. Um, I, I almost feel a little bit silly saying, "Tell us a bit about yourself," because you know we 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 all know so much about you already. But in case anybody doesn't know you, do tell us a little bit about yourself and and how you got to where you are now. Well, uh, it's quite a long story. I'll try and keep it brief. Um, but I started on my uh, my path really to, to this when I was quite young and I really wanted to be a rock guitarist, you can see, which sorry, there were behind me, one of my many guitars. And um, when I was 21, I was, I was studying to be an osteopath because I had to have a proper job to, uh, to you know, just in case my stellar career as a guitarist didn't work out. And actually yeah. I was doing both things. I was in London, everything was going great. I was, I was starting to record and stuff. Uh, and then I was 21, I severed my left hand, which is not a good look if you're a guitar player, because of course you need your fingers to move dexterously. Uh, and everybody told me you will never recover um, because I'd severed a nerve and the nerves are the things that connect the brain to the fingers and the finger, you know, so I'd be asking my fingers to move and they would just stay still and I couldn't feel anything in my hand. And, um, and I kept on asking people saying, Look, you know, how long until I can play the guitar? And they said, you, you never will. You'll be left with like a useless claw. And uh, by that time, I'd already kind of, and I got into NLP. I'd started to hear about it, but it was just on the on the edges of what I had knew about. But I asked everybody I, I, I knew, you know, what do I do about this? And and pretty much everyone said, well, look, you know, the books say you won't recover. And I was like, ah, surely, you know, like if lizards can re like, grow tails, you know, and, uh, and there must be other people who've recovered from this. There must be. So I, I was kind of already in a kind of an NLP modeling, right? Who, where is the exception? Where, who are the people who already achieved this? And, um, and I found some people, some stories of various people who did, who had recovered. And I also found a, a practitioner who said, I think you'll recover. Um, the only one out of about 40 people I talked to. And I decided, right, I like latched onto that, right? Okay, yeah. somebody else thinks this is possible. And that got me really intrigued. So in the end, I did recover. Um, as many people know, you know, I played, played guitar, um, toured, made some albums. I even played with Eric Clapton once, which is a story I often tell, but that's another, for another day. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so I got, well, I recovered my hand. And I met a lot of people who had exactly the same injury and didn't. And so that really kind of got me intrigued by what's possible, uh, how much when people say to you, you can't, you know, you can't achieve this, how much does that affect us? Yeah. Particularly if it comes from an authority figure, a doctor, you know, a, a knowledgeable friend, a parent. Um, in that journey, yeah, I started to get, uh, find out a bit about NLP. So I was already doing that before I came into NLP, but NLP was like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. This is the kind of way I've been thinking about things. So let's find out more about that. And also working as a clinician, so I was an osteopath, still a guitarist, but an osteopath, I'd find people would come with physical problems. And it's like the problem, the cause of the problem is not physical. You know, they've like got a bad back or I've got stomach problems, but it's not the food they're eating. It's not the way they're sitting. Um, it's the stuff in their life and I don't have really the skills I need to help them deal with that. So I retrained uh, NLP, Ericksonian hypnotherapy and psychotherapy, coaching, all that stuff, and then put that together. So then I had this physical approach to health and this psychological, emotional, mental approach to health, uh, conscious and unconscious. And I've got some really great results, you know, because when you combine those skill sets, it's quite, quite cool. Yeah. Um, so people would then send me their difficult clients. They could go and see Phil, you know, <laughs> so I'd get the, you know, everyone's w most tricky client. Like, I don't know what to do with them. Go and see Phil. He might have an extra, an extra trick. Um, and, and I did quite often, but I would still end up with people who's like, I don't know what to do with them. You know, I've done my best tricks. I've done everything I could think of and it's not working. And, and that's when the second chunk happened, which was the development of the lightning process, which yeah. was, right, what do we do with these people? Here they are. And they've come to me. I can't help them. Um, they've already seen like hundreds of people. What do I do? Do I send them back out through the revolving door, you know, into mm. another therapist's room? So maybe, maybe what I need to do, and again, it's the kind of fundamental of NLP, of course, is like, well, let's, what if we modeled? What if I modeled? I use the word we a lot because I, I think about me and the client working together. But yeah. what if I modeled stuckness? 
um, which I think is quite an interesting conversation. Like normally we, we model excellence, you know, like yes. uh, how do people run fast to do that? What if we also look at the other side of it? You know, how do we, what if we model people who are incredible without meaning to at staying stuck independent yeah. of everything it's excellent still isn't yeah it, it is an excellent isn't it not which, a useful thing <laughs> i call upside down genius the kind of ability yeah. to somehow stay the same in, in spite of not wanting to yeah. so that's where the lightning press began and to kind of do a modeling project and in, in research they call it a kind of qualitative analysis of what what's going on uh is there is there anything and, and i had no idea what i was looking for so i was like well i'm just going to start with talking and listening to loads of people, seeing if I can hear anything or see anything that's familiar, that's similar, and then contrast it to people who had similar issues and recovered. And, right. and, and as a result of that, I started and some also reading some, and I often reference this, uh, reading some really interesting papers by Richard Bolstead about some of this stuff, like he, 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 he kind of modeled anxiety. It's like, what do you have to do to have excellent anxiety? I was like, that's really interesting. So looking at it from those kind of perspectives, and, and digging into what other people in NLP were saying and also other pieces of positive psychology and stuff were showing up at that time. And I ended up with a kind of model of, well, this seems to be what stuckness looks like or feels like or the way people approach. Uh, therefore, what would we need to create in order to help people to shift from that brilliance to something else? And that's where the lightning process came in. So um, that's kind of how I got to do what I do. So I work a lot with chronic health issues. Um, I have a team of um, amazing practitioners across the world, loads and loads of research. We've probably done more research than most kind of non-orthodox health approaches. Probably a lot of the NLP research, it comes back to the lightning process. We've done a lot of stuff on that because particularly in the healthcare field, you need to have uh, some kind of research to back up any claims that you make. They're very, they're very, very particular about people saying anything without any any given research. So I spend my time doing that. I work with high performance athletes, uh, Guinness world record breaking explorers. And also my PhD was in substance use. So dealing with people who have like the, the least, uh, you know, kind of what, what's called capital, you know, in terms of they don't have a house, they don't have a family, uh, they don't have money. Uh, and working with those people, helping them to go, well, can we, because again, with this whole idea of stuckness, people would come to me and go, I've got, I've got this stuckness, you know, I've got multiple sclerosis, I've got this, can you help that? And I'd go, I don't know, but I'd be interested to find out. Like Ericsson, yes. I'd be curious to find out. Yes. And some people came with the drug issues and said, do you think you can help us with that? Because nothing works for this. You know, the, the stats for drug issues are pretty poor. Yeah. And so my PhD was focusing on an application of the lightning process for helping people with substance use issues, which showed that it was more effective than what they normally do for treatment. Yeah. So yeah, long answer to a very short question. But that's a kind of, uh, you probably a broad... answered all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> a broad brush stroke of how I came to be here. And then right. of course, it's you know, what am I doing? Journey. What am I doing is, you know, the masterclass, well, it's like looking at some of the stuff that's come from that journey. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so the masterclass is about inner wisdom techniques. So that in itself, immediately in me raises curiosity so, so <laughs> what are inner wisdom techniques <laughs> yeah so so inner wisdom the, the way i'm defining it is quite quite broad but it's fundamentally hacking into connecting with your inner knowing the kind of sense you have of what's up and down what's right and wrong for you linked very strongly to this idea that we have i think we all share which is actually we're the expert on ourselves you know we we know more about ourselves we know more about our brilliance the way we mess ourselves up the way we trip ourselves up our habits the, the things that we and, and the things we need so i'm writing a book about this at the moment and if you're a coach then you're having constantly to kind of gauge right well, how do i how do i put this in a way that's going to appeal to this person to make them light up or be interested or how can I deliver this yeah. within a Western techniques one of the things we're doing is turning this over to the client and say I'm going to I'm going to train you in some skills so you can do some of this so you can learn to be your inner coach and that's really cool because first of all then you can do loads of work in between the session Mm. And you can, can run with this mm. don't need me as much which i think is a really important thing that you yeah. know you can 
take this into your world. But also, you know the questions to ask yourself and you know the way to ask them in the way that will get your attention. You know when you're cheating on yourself and tricking yeah. yourself up. And so it opens up some really interesting conversations mm -hmm. about how we can tap into that. So it's kind of a range of techniques that are based on these ideas. We have these incredible resources within us. But there's also another bunch of techniques that are attached to this, which are, which are kind of a bit more nuanced. So those are quite mm -hmm. practical things like coaching. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and working out what state you need to be in, being able to get into extraordinary states, which I'll yeah. talk about in a minute when we talk about gateway states, but also uh, other things like, you know, uh, the wisdom of nature, the wisdom of uh, our ancestors, you know, what did they know? What can we tap into from that? Looking at time in a different way, instead of looking at here, now, tomorrow, yesterday, last week. What if we look over the course of thousands of years? What, how does that change our perspe perception and perspective on things? So all that, lots of really interesting stuff that I've kind of found on the way that I've found really helps people to get a different perspective, that sense of connection with everything and everybody, you know, those kind of things. So a real range of like simple, you know, this is how you set a goal in a really effective way and, and coach yourself in a, in a powerful mm. way to much bigger things around mission and, you know, what's important for you. So a whole range of stuff. And, and very, the, the words that came to mind when you were saying that was about, it's about self-empowerment because mm. that's so powerful to be able to be in that position to, to have self-empowerment. So what an amazing gift. Um, so... So who's going to benefit um, most from, from coming to the masterclass? I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to be there. <laughs> Who else <laughs> well, is going I to think, benefit? I think everybody, obviously, would benefit from this. So we've got two kind of groups. First of all, we've got practitioners as themselves. Mm. You know, we know as practitioners, one of the problems we can have is we are isolated a lot of the time, you know. Yeah. Uh, we work on our own. So uh, that ability to be self-reflective, to, to work on our own stuff, this gives us an, an ability to kind of move through. I find sometimes when I'm doing NLP processes, I get a bit, you know, I'm doing them myself, I get a bit lost because I'm like, huh? I'm supposed to be doing something and yeah, I'm supposed to be feeling it. So the inner wisdom techniques are structured so that you can actually do them on yourself if you want. Right. That's, that's a big part of it. Um, so that's really valuable. And I think as practitioners, it's important for us to be looking at our stuff. We all have stuff. It's all good. Yeah. Um, and I encourage people to kind of do this like 10 minutes every day, every day. You know, how, how much of the time do we tell other people that maybe they should do some stuff? Do we do that yeah. for ourselves? Um, a friend of mine said, uh, he's talking about meditation, but it was always stuck with me. He said, uh, you know, sometimes when you're going to work, you're like, I just got to go on with the work. I haven't got time to do my meditation. You know? And he said, uh, time meditating is never time wasted. It should be seen as part of your your day. And I, I completely yeah. agree with that. I think that we need to kind of get ourselves in the right space and state. So there's that. And then there's working with clients. So this stuff is really good if you've got clients who are stuck. Yeah. Um, so whether that's stuck in their life, they want to feel more, more vot motivated, they are more on a mission level, I like want to change the world or make a difference, but I don't quite know or I need some support in that. It's great for that. There's also great for health stuff where people start so anxiety, depression, all that end of town, as well as more physical stuff like immune system issues, digestive issues, neurological issues, a whole range of stuff that can be applied. We found some amazing changes people have got. And then of course, habits, substance uses. So because it's tapping into this inner wisdom, um, so for instance, we talk about substance use, one of the ways that uh, the version of the lightning process really is effective for people with substance use is uh, as they think about using, you know, there are lots of things that trigger them or, you know, make them think oh, now's the time. Yeah. Mm. They don't have any neurological or solution for that problem apart from drinking or taking drugs because that's worked for them a lot. Yeah. And when with these inner wisdom techniques and the version of the lightning process for this, it's like it gives them an opportunity to pause that kind of runaway train and make some different decisions in that moment rather than going, I've got to wait three weeks to see Phil or two weeks or two days. <laughs> right, well, that's a long period of time yes. using drugs. If yeah. they could have something they can they can use right there and then. And I think this is a, a big part of it, which I, I always encourage is reframing NLP as training, like we're training our clients to be skilled rather yeah. than fixing them or, you know, yeah. give them something exactly. they can take away, they can keep on using, they can keep on generating stuff. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And how wonderful to be able to have a technique that 
that will have a, a series of techniques that can just break that state in the moment like you say it's you know because I think sometimes we forget to use our techniques when we most need them <laughs> <laughs> well I certainly do <laughs> so so you've explained a little bit about about what the masterclass is about. Um, so what will delegates uh, sort of take away? I mean, this is this is a six hour immersion in inner wisdom techniques. So what will delegates take away from from this masterclass? Well, a, a whole range of stuff some, from very kind of practical based skills, like training them on how to teach other people to develop their inner coach how to know what to do when you when 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 they have what, what do you do next um a whole range of techniques around shifting our perspective and relationship to time uh, being able to see things in a different light um and as i talked about some of those more kind of nuanced things about okay how do we tap into some wisdom that we could get from nature from our connection to the universe from thinking about you know, our ancestors or thinking about the future in a different way. So just a whole a, a kind of like, I'm going to be teaching about five or six different techniques. So I was kind of deciding what to do. Do we, you know, because sometimes in the masterclass it's like one technique and you spend the day doing that. And there were certainly a few techniques I could spend six hours doing, but I thought it'd be more interesting to give you, you know, probably about four or five different techniques. You can go, oh, I could use that. I could see, I can use that. Or I could use that and that. So I think always with clients, what you what you need to have is one more trick you know <laughs> one yeah, more yeah. thing in the back yeah. because when you, you oh, i've done that i've done that that's not changed it so this is going to give you some new things you've probably never seen before certainly new perspectives new aspects of stuff and i think that's always really valuable to have another thing you can go oh i could turn to this and see what this can do absolutely absolutely i'm i'm, I'm excited already <laughs> so <laughs> So you've, you've said a little bit about where this came from. How did you create inner wisdom techniques from from your workings in the forest? Well, it was it was kind of the, with the lightning process, um, which I spent the last nearly 25 years doing. It is kind of an inner wisdom technique because it's all about. So people come particularly with chronic health issues and the model they come from is I'm really ill. Mm -hmm. Fix me, which is completely reasonable <laughs> because <laughs> that's the model we come from and yes. the lightning process says we already tried that it didn't work what we've got to do instead is find a way to, for you to get inside and for you to make changes from the inside so that's yeah. that's why it's a kind of in a western technique it's about right. helping people to recognize they are they do have resources inside them there is a way for them to tap into it they just need to learn how so they need to learn it's possible that there's yeah. a way to, to do it and to teach them to do it uh, and support them in that and then they go out and put it into practice and you support them as they practice so that's the the lightning process and as i went along that process i was like oh there's some additional things that don't quite fit in that particular structure of the lightning process but some extra tools that would be really useful that we could put on the outside of this or support other people with and that's where these extra tools are from they're like things i've used when i've done the lightning process and then i'm working with people um helping them to to shift stuff and something else comes up I was like, okay well how are we going to deal with this what's what would be an appropriate way to deal with this so lots of other techniques uh, that come from that journey of uh I believe that people are the expert in themselves. Yeah. Uh, we need, may need to remind them that sometimes and support them. It doesn't mean doing it on their own, but really helping them to step into that role because that's one of the most powerful roles you can have in your life. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, you obviously you alluded to, and we know you've done an awful lot of research um, around various aspects of this so how do how do the inner wisdom techniques fit in with your research as well as with the lightning process you've explained a bit about the lightning process but your research as well yeah so research is a strange strange beast uh, in that <laughs> yeah. if you research on one thing you can't really use that research to support something else right. um because it goes well the research was on that thing and that yeah. other thing is slightly different so currently there isn't any research into the the inner wisdom techniques because we haven't done the research but um they do involve quite a lot of the elements of the lightning process some of them stripped back but some yeah. of the elements of the lightning process which have been very well researched so there's, yeah. there's a kind of crossover between all the research we've done and gone well we've, we've shown that there is effect from these things and here are some of the kind of nuggets that are really valuable that people could take away so yeah it, um in time we'll do research but research does take quite a long time <laughs> 
Yes, yes. Well, especially because you're working in the health field, aren't you? So there's um, there is that, as you say, it's really important um, to to do high levels of research. And the other thing with research is, you know, usually with research, you've got to you've got to really narrow down the world. So mm. uh, with this, you know, wisdom techniques as we talked about earlier, they're, they're like for a, such a range of things. If you're doing research, you have to go right. We're going to look at people yeah. with left sided headaches. You know. Yes. <laughs> or something yeah. you know, very and make sure all their headaches are the same you know quality and because then that, that's how research works it likes to go and it works okay that's, that's look at that bit yeah. and in the wisdom techniques are actually much more about let's have a look at uh, all sorts of interesting things and so how can we apply these techniques to anything that you yeah. need to apply them to it's the same with nlp isn't it and the lightning process is that there are a whole it's there's a such a wide range of, of um things that they can help with and so yes when you do hone in and, and realizing that that research has to be on once sp- I mean I, it's only when you said that you know left-sided headaches is <laughs> it does have to be that specific doesn't it and then then saying as you've just said you know that it's oh you then can't apply that to that and it's sort of ah oh, that's why it takes so long and has to be repeated in so many different ways because it's not a simple well, it worked there, therefore it works here. Yeah, and also, and I said left headache, I said headaches, it wouldn't yes. be left, it would just be headaches, but yeah. um, for, for the same cause. But you, let's say you did a study on headaches, you would need to make sure that you had a control group of people yeah. who were having something different, who were matched, so the average age was roughly the same, you know, all those things would have to be the same. And then when you did it, you would then have to repeat it, and or somebody else would have to repeat it a number of times until people are like, okay, that's probably how it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. And if in that process, as often happens, somebody else gets a slightly different result, they go, well, maybe, you know. And so, so it goes, and it's just a long, long, long process. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. We're working with long COVID a lot at the moment, yeah. and um, you know, they're crying out for, for effective treatments for long COVID, and not putting any money our way at all because they're looking <laughs> in a completely different direction yeah. uh, but there is a lot of money going into long covid but even even that is taking a long time for anything yeah. to happen um and you know in the complexities of the world of research you have to have people who are up for and interested in studying things particularly things that are a little bit left to center because yeah. as soon as they join in to, to that research they get associated with that and mm. some people don't want to be associated with the wonderful world of NLP for yeah. all sorts of interesting reasons and so they won't do the research yeah it's a shame but, um, mm. thank goodness for you <laughs> <laughs> oh and lots of other people who yeah, yeah Lisa yeah, well, and Richard and, exactly yeah. there, there are <laughs> we it's an increasing field it's an increasing um part of the NLP world um thank goodness so um but yes it's it's really good to have people like you and Lisa and Richard that are willing to um step into that arena <laughs> so um so I mean that's that's real good insight thank you um so final question really what um what if anything can delegates do to prepare for your um, for your masterclass? I mean, apart from you're obviously being what well, you are being incredibly generous, and you're offering two free um, taster sessions: one on the twenty fourth of November and one on the sixteenth of March. But apart from attending those, which will be additional tasters, um, what can they do, if anything, to prepare for the masterclass? Yeah, so the little tasters are going to be really interesting. We're doing an hour where we're uh, talking about some of these concepts, we're not just talking about them, we're actually going to be demonstrating some of them. I'm actually going to be demonstrating a, a technique I'm not even covering in the masterclass that uh, you can only only observe by joining. We're not, I don't think we're even recording them, so you have to attend if you, if you want to get a touch of that. And spaces are limited, so Karen will tell you all about that. Um, what else could you do? Uh, there are books, of course, that I've written. Um, so the the one I'd probably recommend is Get the Life You Love Now, um, which is, I've got a copy of it over there. I can't reach it. Uh, <laughs> is, is, you can get it on Kindle and Amazon and stuff. It's, Brilliant. it's published by Hay House, um, which is the kind of blueprint of what the lightning press is. That's a really good place to go. The 10 okay. questions, another book I wrote with the same publishers, uh, 10 questions to ask for success is another really good book all about the most important questions you could ask anywhere in your life. And um, that really tracks back into the whole inner wisdom concept, which is if we can ask the right questions and, and, and stay present and answer, then 
we have the solutions within ourselves. And in fact, the, the 10 questions, so the 10 questions was a book I did, I wrote as a result of talking to clients and, and I'd say, ask them questions and they go, oh, that's a good <laughs> question. And I was like, well, write that down. Uh, yeah. so, and then I'd, I'd written the 10 questions and then I spoke to this lovely woman uh, who worked for the BBC and um, she said, oh, I was at this meeting, this kind of BBC get together and this really famous playwright showed up and I really wanted to ask him a question about this thing I was doing in, in ghettos in South Africa. Mm. And, um, but then I was like, oh, I'm not sure I, I, what would people think if I went up and talked to him? Would they think I was a bit pushy or yeah. too full of myself or too umdenard about it? And she decided, right, no, this is too important. What really matters here is I need to talk to this guy because this could make a difference to kids who are living in townships. Mm. Um, and she went to talk to him and he'd gone. <laughs> he missed the opportunity. And so we were talking about this. And she, and, and I realized this was the 11th question that never made it into the book, which was uh, asking yourself, and this is an inner wisdom, inner wisdom mm. question, uh, what really matters here? What's the most important thing here? And um, because so often we get distracted by the shiny things or the, you know, the cat yeah. or the bills when actually, that question realigns us to our kind of mission. It's like, well, what is really important here? Now, sometimes what's really important here could be really being present, you know, yeah. to the kids or the sunset or the friendships you're with. And sometimes it could be what's really important here is, is to, you know, get on with this project that I said I need to do and I'm going to get on with it, even though it may be difficult and challenging. So that kind of encapsulates quite a lot of the inner wisdom thing is like, finding ways to regroup and, and be resilient, independent yeah. of what life throws at us, finding really easy hacks to get ourselves back to being our best self. Yeah. Well, when you asked that question, I, I literally felt myself physically just grounding back down to th this a really powerful question. Mm. And the other thing about that question and, and all those questions and, and the 10 questions, mm. the one I just told you that is, a lot of them came from the wisdom of other people. You know, people would, yeah. I would ask a question or, or some, the question would be prompted by something they said, or they'd ask themselves a question like the woman I talked to you about. And that's another sign of this inner wisdom that we have so much extraordinariness within us. Yeah. And if we can collect some of that together and then and step into it when we need, then all sorts of interesting things are possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Thank you. Um, I'm really, really excited about the uh, about the masterclass, which is taking place on for real in a proper hotel <laughs> uh, on Saturday, the 13th of May next year um, at, at the uh, Radisson Hotel Heathrow, where we've held the conference successfully in the past. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, it will be live streamed at the same time. So for those people who are overseas and can't actually make it to um, London, it will be live streamed as well. Um, and, and as you said, Phil, we've got, um, we've got two um, taster sessions that you're running as well. Uh, the, tw the one for the 24th of November, um, you can already book that one on Eventbrite. Uh, and we will be sending an email out to uh, everybody who's expressed an interest in the conference that's coming out sometime next week um, but the details will also be on the website so uh, nlpconference.com so thank you phil for um giving us some real insight as to why it's absolutely essential uh, <laughs> to be at the masterclass uh, and i'm so looking forward to it next year and so looking forward to seeing you in person again after such a long time um, but i think it sounds like there's some real gems there that everybody is really going to benefit from so uh, so thank you so much phil for taking the time to talk to us today and um wish you well and we look forward to the masterclass great to speak to you karen thank you